Hey guys, what's up? It's Ripe again. In today's video, a smug entitled Karen tries to kick a World War II veteran out of Walmart. She thinks he is an employee and then she takes out her pepper spray when he refuses to help her. Here is what happened. Subscribe to Ripe on YouTube and hit the bell to turn on notifications. The first one starts like this. I want to tell you all the story about when I was taking my friend to Walmart one day. Now you gotta understand my friend is much older than me and served in World War II so as you can guess he was a very old man. We met one day and things just seemed to click between us. He did not really have anybody else, so a few times a month I would pick him up from the assisted living facility he lived in and take him out to places. Get him a haircut, go get ice cream and of course go to Walmart. I just want to make it clear that I don't take care of him, he is my friend and perfectly capable of doing things on his own for the most part. We got to Walmart and he wanted to go and look at some shirts because the buttons on some of his were wearing out. Knowing that he did not really like the electronics section, I left him at the clothes section so I could go and pick up a game that I'd been waiting to come out. For some reference, I was wearing blue jeans and a t-shirt of a band that I really liked. My friend was wearing his jeans, sneakers and a shirt that said US Army on it. I want to point this out because it was very clear that neither one of us could be assumed to be working at this store. When I got back about 10 minutes later, I saw this Karen yelling at my friend while he was just standing there looking sad. I think at this point in the story, he was 92 and nobody should be yelling at a man that old for any reason. I jumped right in and was going to start telling Karen to leave him alone, but she started talking first. Karen, oh thank god, I asked for an employee forever ago and finally you come walking in like no big deal. Me, ma'am, I don't. Karen, you need to do something about this old man. He does not belong in a store like this. He should not even be outside of whatever nursing home they keep him in. Me, don't talk about him like... I mean, really, you would think that you would show a little bit of care and wanting your customers to have a good experience. Yet you let somebody like him come in and ruin the store for everybody else. As you can tell, she was not letting me get a single word in and was just rambling on. For me, it went on for about 5 minutes, but for the sake of this story, I will give you the general story of what happened while I was gone. So my friend was looking at the shirts and pulling out a couple that he thought would be good for him. Karen I guess was trying to get past him and through the aisle, but he was not paying much attention. That was when she yelled at him and finally got his attention and told him to move out of the way. Being an old man can make you kind of slow and while I don't mind it one bit, clearly Karen could not have any compassion. I am sure he was doing his best and going as fast as possible, but it was still too slow for Karen. He also dropped the shirts and he picked up all over the floor that he just set her off even more. So she really did think that I was an employee and wanted me to kick somebody out basically for just being old. After she finished and asked me what I was gonna do about it, I was finally able to get a word in. I told her finally that I did not work there and the man she had been harassing was a friend of mine. She did not believe me and threatened to get the manager and make sure that I was fired. I told her to go right ahead because I did not work there. I also told her that she should be ashamed of herself picking on a World War II veteran that just wanted to enjoy one of the few times he gets to go out and shop. Cue her screaming for a manager until one showed up and told him that she wanted me fired because I refused to get rid of a manager that was rude and harassing her. The manager told her that I didn't work at the store and clearly didn't believe that the 92 year old man was any kind of a threat. I told him what really happened and that she wants him kicked out for being too slow to move at this age. The fact that he risked his life many years ago in order to make sure that so many people got to live made me really angry. I was gonna say something else but Karen seemed to now be mad at the manager. She reached into her bag and pulled out pepper spray. She sprayed it right into the face of the manager while screaming harassment and assault. Then she aimed for my friend but I got in front and took the pepper spray to the face instead. I did not move away though and was gonna make sure I did not let her do that to him again. The whole time he was telling me that in training he had to deal with worse and gave me some tips to not think of the burning. The police obviously were called but I don't know if it was because she sprayed us or if somebody heard her screaming assault. Either way they showed up and it was clear who was at fault without even needing to see the tapes. 
The manager and me could barely keep our eyes open and Karen had the pepper spray in her hands. The manager demanded that she be removed from Walmart and the police started to comply and tell Karen that she had to leave right now. Instead though, she wanted the police to make sure that I was fired from the store that I still didn't work at. She also wanted them to arrest my friend for harassment and it was clear that none of the officers believed that she was being harassed by the old man that could barely move. I did not mention it before, but my friend did have a small stroke at one point and his speech is a little hard to understand. The police could tell that he probably did not do anything. Karen did not like that answer and then did the dumbest thing I think I have ever seen somebody try. She was still holding the pepper spray and she aimed it right at the police officer and tried to attack him with it. I don't know if it hit or not, but the officer had her on the ground and in cuffs within seconds. The matter of what happened at the Walmart was no longer their main concern. She had just attacked a police officer and was gonna end up being taken to jail instead of simply escorted out of the store. The manager kept apologizing, but I just told him that it was not his fault, the woman was totally crazy. I picked the shirts off the floor and we went to go and buy the shirts and my game. We only did one thing but it was so eventful that the both of us were exhausted. We never got asked if we wanted to press charges or anything but that does not really matter to me. My friend did not deserve what Karen did to him and she ended up getting the consequences for it. It did not deter us at all and a couple weeks later I picked him up to go and do something else. I don't know if karma is real or not but I can say one thing for sure. If it does exist, then messing with an old veteran is probably a way to make sure that you get a ton of immediate negative karma. People around us saw what she did and even if they did not know he served, they could see how old he was. Nobody was gonna take her side on the matter and I guess she just snapped. I know that more karma is gonna await her when she gets charged for attacking a police officer with pepper spray in the middle of a Walmart. I kind of hope she ends up in jail and learns that screaming assault and for the person in charge is not gonna get her very far. And yeah, ripe stars, I don't know what kind of drugs this person was on because honestly I would hope it is drugs because nobody can be this stupid and entitled for real. But anyway, let's continue with the next story. This one is titled, Am I the douchebag for telling my boyfriend he should not come? Me, 21 female, boyfriend, 23 male, let's call him Charlie. Around a month ago, my mom mentioned a family vacation while in a call with me. Charlie and I have been together for about a year. He has still not met my mom's side of the family, only my dad's. My mom, 42 female, lives in my home country together with my stepdad, 50 male, and my stepbrother, 24 male, lives there but not in our hometown. Because of this, he had not had the chance to meet them yet. Yesterday I mentioned it to my best friend, 21 female, with who I have been friends with for 17 years now. I was on the phone with her. She is still in the city we grew up in and goes to university there because of that she often sees my parents. My mom invited her like any other vacation and this time she has decided to come. The trip is fully paid by my stepdad and my mom. My stepbrother will be bringing his fiance, 21 female, too. Charlie was in the room while I was on the call and asked me what he should pack. I looked at him confused and asked if he was going somewhere. He said that he needs to know what to pack for the trip. I laughed and thought he was joking since I never said he was coming. When I realized he was serious, I sat him down and told him that he's not gonna be able to come and there was no reservation for him, plus it will be very inappropriate to invite him over knowing that this is a family trip and it will make bad impressions like he is trying to come just because it's gonna be free. They have never met him and there is not any rooms left, he does not have a passport and other reasons that I tried explaining. He flipped out on me telling me that I'm a B-I-T-C-H and that I'm probably cheating on him and that's why he's not invited. I tried explaining but he left the apartment. He has not returned since yesterday and at 4am I have to leave for the airport so I am worried sick. I called many times and texted but he's not responding. So am I the a-hole? And yeah, ripe stars, please let me know in the comments what you think about this situation. Is OP the a-hole or not?
A user in the comments said, not the a-hole, why would a grown man wait until the day before traveling to a different country to number one, ask what to pack and b, expect to leave the country without a passport. Either this guy is dumb and dependent on someone else to help him function or a total manipulator who wanted a reason to pick a fight the night before you go on a family vacation OP. Something stinks here and more than likely it's gonna be your apartment by the time you get back from parties and other people staying there. End it for your own safety. And then someone else said, a clear discussion should have occurred long before the day before you left, but overall I wanna go with NTA because your ex-boyfriend was being an entitled child. I'm really confused as to why he thought he could leave the country with no passport. My family lives overseas right now and my boyfriend came home with me for the holidays. This summer my parents wanted to do a strictly just family trip, which obviously I mentioned to my boyfriend because I was excited, but made it clear he was not on the invite list. Nothing against him, I would have loved for him to come, but I was not the one bankrolling this trip, my parents were, and I understand their desire for a last big trip with their own kids before they have to move back stateside. The fact that it was just family was part of the discussion from the beginning and I did not try to hide my plans or exclude him from any of my activities. And now an update to the story, hello everyone, I hope you're having a nice day. After my original post I figured I could make an update. When I was leaving from the apartment four days ago I left a key to my neighbor slash friend. Yesterday she called me to inform me that my boyfriend's stuff is missing and my writing studio and my manga collection are destroyed. Some of my savings are stolen and yesterday he had tried to empty my bank account but failed miserably. 5k are apparently missing from the drawer of my nightstand and boyfriend is nowhere to be found. Luckily, me, my stepbrother's fiance's mother is a lawyer. Mom's side of the family, stepbrother, his fiance, mom, stepdad, grandmas and grandpas etc are trying to calm me down and get me away from the situation as much as possible. I thought this was a minor problem in the beginning but here we are. Dad's side of the family is telling me to drop the charges and that I am overreacting. Yes. I did place, or press I guess, charges, I will have to deal with it further when I get back but police are already on the hunt for him. Some people said I was the a-hole because this would be the perfect time to meet my family supposedly but in this case it just seemed like a direct, I want a free trip, to me. Somebody pointed out we have communication problems and yes we do. I did not really want to mention this but I'm on the autism spectrum so it's pretty normal in a way and he knew two and a half weeks before I went to the trip and I made it clear he won't be coming over. And the next one is titled, screwing over entitled investor. Background, my parents and their neighbor bought homes in an up and coming part of Florida 20 years ago talking half an acre lots with 2500 square foot homes for like 130k. Our neighbor's home was a little smaller than my parents, no pool and over the 20 years the only thing done to the house was a new roof. Nothing else had been changed, everything was still the original, appliances, paint, AC unit, cabinets, tile and carpet, I wish I could say she took care of it and never needed to change things, but that was not the case, our neighbor's house looks 20 years old. And well, she is a widow and the house is huge for just her, so she decided to sell and take advantage of the market and she listed it for 400k. Despite her never having put a penny into it, the house goes on a bidding war and the top bidder is an investor from California. She offers to pay 30k over asking, pay the closing costs and can do it same day. Cue my malicious compliance. The investor woman had two stipulations. Our neighbor takes the house off the market immediately and she turns over the key to her management company with the cash for the home held in escrow until the key was turned over and our neighbor's side of the paperwork done. Now our neighbor was up front with this woman and the state of the home and asked if she wanted to have her management company come look at it first. The woman says, no, I am renting the house and it doesn't need to be painted. Just pull it off the market. This woman essentially bought the home for about 450k when it was all said and done, so our neighbor immediately goes to the management company office with her realtor, signs her paperwork, hands over the key and gets the check for the home. A few days later, our neighbor gets a call from the investor lady. She is irate. The house is in disarray, in need of a paint job ASAP. New appliances and flooring at the least, she demands that our neighbor paints the house, she won't take ownership of the home until that is done. To which our neighbor responds to her, it's not my home anymore, it was signed over to you and that the check handed to me and cleared. That house is no longer my problem, enjoy. 
This story all came about because yesterday my parents called our old neighbor. There was a for sale sign on the house again and we were confused. Our old neighbor promptly showed up and told us the story and we were all laughing hysterically because the woman has it listed for 430k which anyone with eyes to tour it would never pay and even if she did get it she would still be losing a ton of money. Who does not love a story when greedy investors trying to inflate the market lose and lose big? Guy gets arrested and his car impounded. It all started earlier last week, I just went to bed at around 10 and I had fallen into a peaceful sleep only to be awoken at about 11.45 by the sound of a car with one of those loud fart can mufflers flooring it down my street. Alright, okay, I can handle it on occasion, maybe it is just the kids a few streets over messing around with their tuners or some moron on a crotch rocket motorcycle. And by the way guys, I feel personally offended by that last word. Anyway, fast forward to the next night, I go to bed after studying my ass off for a chemistry test tomorrow and all of a sudden... <laughs> There goes the same car again, this time past midnight at 12.30ish. This time I was kinda irritated because it startled me. The next morning my dad asks me if I heard the car, to which I reply yes. He tells me that he was walking by the window when he heard the motor, so he peered outside and saw a car with squarish hat and taillights floor it down our street. I asked several of my best friends in the neighborhood if they heard it and sure enough they did, including my friend that lives two streets over. The next day I am playing with my cat in the living room after dinner and I hear the same muffler, this time driving slowly down my street. I opened the blinds and caught a glimpse of a black BMW M3 drive up a driveway of a house at the end of my street. This house in particular has a lot of college parties because sometimes I can see drunk and high people stumbling around through the big glass windows, sometimes naked. Surprise surprise, later that evening before it got dark I drove past the house and wrote down the license plate number, make and model of the car. Sure enough later that night our good old friend Speedy Gonzalez comes drag racing down my street again. This time I parked my car down on the street and filmed him flooring his BMW down my street. At this point I am done, your three strikes are up buddy, this means war. One day passes without sight nor sound of the BMW. By this time it is Friday, the day when that house commonly has parties. Now for the revenge part of the story, little does this guy know my ex-girlfriend's dad is a cop. Since I dated his daughter, we got to know each other fairly well. Anyways, after dinner, sure enough, Mr. Speed Demon comes rolling up to the house, followed by truckloads of other scummy looking college students. I text my ex asking for her dad's number, I give him a call and explain the situation. He told me to send him a text with the video, plate number, make model and the address of the party house, along with the time range Mr. Too Fast Too Furious leaves, so he can email it directly to the dispatch officer. Later that night he replies that a unit is set up at the end of my street, waiting for Dr. Ledfoot to come rocketing down my street and sure enough, it happens. This time at about 1 o'clock I go back to sleep, hoping the cop caught him. In the morning after sleeping in, I check my texts and sure enough, my ex's dad pulls through. It ends up they caught him speeding, intoxicated in possession of MJ, disturbing the peace and with illegal modifications on his car. Which to be exact meant no muffler. Lastly I heard, he is now paying some hefty tickets and fines and spending a bit of time in jail with his nice car impounded for a DUI. And ripe stars, I am wondering if you ever had any car enthusiast neighbors who took it a step too far. If there were any neighbors like that, what have you done against them? Let us know in the comments and while you're at it, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and maybe even post some star emojis in the comments if you want to support my channel. Thank you so much in advance, these two things help my channel tremendously.
The next one is titled Don't Mess With A Man's Car, A Story Of Belated Parking Lot Revenge. Years ago, I lived in a coastal city and became friends with a guy who owned a boat. He kept his boat docked near a popular tourist area and the garage he used was often full due to the crowds. As a slip owner he had a pass that would give him priority at a private garage entrance so he could skip the lines and be more certain of getting a parking spot. This is not uncommon for private garages that offer monthly passes or passes to employees. Also due to the crowds this garage had a computer that would count the number of cars going in and the cars going out. It would not let any vehicles into the garage if there were no spots available. One day my friend used his pass to get into the garage knowing it was nearly full. After doing a full lap of all levels, he realized the only remaining spot was next to an older poop brown metallic Corvette with vanity plates that had parked about a foot over the line. Well, sucks to be that guy, my friend pulled his little SUV in, blocking the driver's door of the Corvette. After all, parking is scarce and this guy did not pay for two spots. So petty revenge. Later that night, after a day on the water, he returned to find that the Corvette owner apparently did not like having his door blocked and retaliated by keying the side of my friend's Cherokee. He filed a claim, lost his deductible and got the side of his Jeep repainted. About a year later he bought another boat and was working to restore the cabin. He drove into the garage as he always does and starts looking for a spot. When what does he see? The same poop brown corvette with the same vanity plate. Well the heavens were certainly thinking of justice today. He got out of his jeep and opened the tailgate to peruse the plethora of instruments that were at his disposal. After all, he had a boatload of tools to restore his old boat. Screwdriver? Not much you can do with that. Hammer? Too cliché. Belt sander? No power cable. Battery powered nail gun? Folks, we have a winner. A few quick minutes later the fiberglass body of the Corvette was perforated by nails. Just putting nails through body panels is hardly fair to the nail gun, after all nails are supposed to connect things together. They must fulfill their purpose. We would not want those nails to suffer an existential crisis would we? So the doors, hood, boot lid, pop up headlights and even the fuel cap were all nailed shut. Do not F with another man's right, revenge will be served and it may be very cold indeed. And ripe stars, I don't know about you, but this story almost applies for nuclear revenge in my opinion. But then again, the line between nuclear and pro-revenge is often a very fine line. Either way, I would love to hear from you which of the revenge subreddits do you enjoy the most? Petty revenge, nuclear revenge, regular revenge or pro-revenge? Let us know in the comments.